My name is Alex Nascimento. I teach blockchain business applications and security tokens at UCLA. I'm going to do a shameless plug here. We have a seminar coming up at UCLA, which is open to all of you guys. You don't need to be a UCLA student uh, to sign up. It's on May 3rd and 4th. Uh, we're bringing a lot of experts. We got a huge amount of support from the organizers of this beautiful conference. Alan and Joseph, like a massive support. Uh, you can Google it, you're easily to find, but if you want the short link is a bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash UCLA SDO. Sign up for it, you're gonna meet some great experts. But enough of my shameless plug. Uh, I'm gonna here introduce my friends, Jason and Stephen, who are gonna talk about what they do because they're much better at doing this than I would ever do. Uh -huh. Gentlemen? Want to All introduce right. yourself? Sure. Um, my name's Jason Barkalu. Um, I'm the founder of Nobella Tech, which is an open science company. All right. And I'm Stephen E. Schmidt. Um, I'm actually a publisher, and I'm looking actually for great stories here. So I'll talk a little bit more about that too. So if you're in the blockchain or cryptocurrency, I'm looking for some great stories to be in a book with Alan and Joseph. So we'll talk more about that. All right, so, you know, I know it's the end of the day and we're all looking for like the happy hour moment, but let's try to keep this engaged. If you guys want to interrupt, raise your hand. I see some of my students here. Vasily is here. Vasily is going to ask a question or else he's not going to get a good grade. <laughs> uh, and, you know, feel free to raise your hand and we'll, we'll keep this as, in, as interactive as possible. So let's start with, you know, a little bit about a generic question like how do you guys see what you're doing impacting education because as much as I travel and as much as I talk to people around the world it's still like we're still a very small group and when I go out and I tell to C level executives I talk about blockchain and they looked at me like what are you talking about like are, you, are we gonna fly to the moon and I'm like no it's the technology behind Bitcoin they're like oh scam uh, yeah, so like, give us your two cents on what you think we need to overcome this gap of education. Well, for me, uh, after my, my Army career, I actually became an inner city uh, science teacher for five years and also adjunct at a couple universities. And I, two, two or three primary things that came to my mind, uh, one was the importance of content. Uh, and content that is personalized to the needs of each individual uh, learner and the ability to deliver that content. Uh, so content in of itself isn't sufficient. Uh, you got to have the ability to deliver it. So I think that one of the, the things that the chain can really enable us to do today is to not only uh, curate the content, but also prescriptively deliver that content to the individual needs of the learner on the chain. Okay, so like, how do we create um, digestible content, right? Because this stuff is pretty technical. It takes a while for you to learn it in and out. Uh, so how can we make it like more digestible for the average person? Is that where Yeah. You? Well, I think one of the really key points of this is crowdsourcing. And, you know, if you look at Scientific American, it's really a synthesis of journals that uh, are published a month or two in advance. And so I think the, the advantage is have at a crowdsourcing level is to allow the experts out there to synthesize it, break it down in a way that uh, most people can digest it. And I think that becomes a tremendous educational tool. You know, you don't expect a 21 year old to jump into a virology course and understand everything that's there at a very high technical level. But if you have somebody that's able to break that information down into bite-sized, uh, uh, absorbable amounts of content, then I think that 21-year-old learner is able to, uh, to make the next step toward understanding virology. Fantastic. Stephen? Yeah, um, you know, same thing. I came here and I was telling a friend that I'm going to go be speaking at a cryptocurrency blockchain, and they said, whoa, what's that? And, uh, and I have to say, I met some people out there that are geniuses. They, they, they're so smart. But when I ask what they do, I'm like, what, what did they just say? So what I'm doing as a publisher here 
is um, we're taking about 20 stories from some of the top companies out there and uh, writing about blockchain and cryptocurrency or what you're, what you're up to and making it simple. So somebody like a 21 year old could read it and say, wow, I get this stuff. And what's so powerful about my wake up books, um, that's the name of my books. Uh, we have sold over 2 million books worldwide. And so when you have a book, a book gets you up on stage. A book gets you out of the seats. And that's what I teach people. Uh, when you have a book, it gives you authority. And that's what authors all about. So if anybody out there wants to learn more, I'll share more about it. But we're just looking for your story and how did you get started? And we want to hear the bad stuff, too, because I know there is a lot of tough uh, barriers that everybody's going through. So we want to have good stories. And what's so cool about it is, say, the 20 companies, they all have big databases. When the book goes out, it goes out to thousands of people worldwide. And so your message gets out in a huge way. And for example, if you guys probably heard of the book called The Secret, well, it sold 28 million copies. So they it have 15 authors, and everybody wrote a short story. So that's what we're doing with this Wake Up book with uh, Joseph and Alan, is uh, looking for other people that want to contribute to it, and also get your message out in a big way. So that's what I think. I, uh, I'm here to contribute my purpose and your purpose, too, of in, in the publication world. So, so Stephen, tell us about some of like the stories you think are interesting for people to learn, right? So obviously, everyone that comes to these kinds of conferences already has a very good idea of what blockchain is, yeah. tokenization of assets, cryptocurrencies. Uh, if you guys don't know it, I highly recommend you know taking my class. <laughs> uh, but you know, I assume you all know. So if, yeah. if that and, and that's kind of like the is that the audience who's going to well, read it? Well, the who, audience who? are so many people are so interested in this topic. And uh, one, I used to put on large conferences, and a very famous person, uh, he was a uh, boyfriend now married to Oprah. He spoke at one of my conferences, Stedman. And uh, he was sharing his story about he grew up in Compton in L.A., and everybody was on the edge of their seats listening to that. Then he grew up a chalkboard and started talking about statistics, and uh, I, felt, I looked at everybody, and they were sort of falling asleep. So the key is people think of that when you read a book, you want to write about blockchain and all that uh, stuff. Like I ask people what they're doing, and it's confusing. Well, people want to read about how you got started and make it simple. That's really the key. Uh, I have a daughter, and what I used to do is share things with her friends like six, when she was six or seven years old. And if they got it, then everybody's going to get it. So, again, people, especially reading a book, they want to hear the emotional ups and downs. And, of course, you want to write about what your company's up to and how you do it. But when they read this chapter or even your whole book, a book is a lead generator for someone to pick up the phone to call you. A book is a lead generator for a new customer. So again, capture their, their interest, their imagination for them to want more of you. And then you could go into the esoteric start. You could you know, go deeper into it. So that's my opinion with a great book. A great book is, is about your life. How many people up, uh, you've been in this uh, industry? Has it been easy for everybody? Or has it been sort of hard sometimes, ups and downs, right? That's the kind of stuff uh, we want to hear about it. So maybe, so maybe Jason is an yeah. entrepreneur. He could be in your book. He can because he's, you know, he's a, gr you know, we all have great stories. And, you know, I'm happy to be here with the cryptocurrency blockchain. But I just did a book with all women, Awaken Women. You know, I'm doing a book with all these doctors about neuroscience and how we're manifesting with uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton. And so uh, with this, yes, I'm looking for the blockchain cryptocurrency, but yes, he has a great story. You said you're already going to be in the book. You have a great story. And I guarantee if you're sitting here, you probably have a great story too. So Jason, why don't you tell us our, your story being an entrepreneur there you go. And, and how did you get educated in the space? Because a lot of the entrepreneurs here, and I guess like myself, you're self-educated, right? Until we, we pushed to have like a, a course offering at a university, you had to learn by yourself. So how did you get to learn around the space? What were the hiccups of getting to know the space and launching a startup 
in the space? Well, uh, you know, for me, it's all about learning. You know, first and foremost, you, you, you've got to understand the content, right? And then second of all, you got to understand, is there a market there that actually can uh, have a problem that you can solve? Uh, so you don't want to be a solution looking for a problem. I think that's uh, something that this space in particular really needs to focus on uh, is actually identifying a problem and then going about developing a solution for that problem. Uh, I, I think as an early entrepreneur, I kind of missed that. You know, I found something I thought was really fascinating and I thought, okay, you know, I'm going to run forward and, and do that. And I never really thought about the market dynamics that really drive a company to be sustainable. Okay. And then you just went out and, and you started digging through materials, YouTube videos. Like, how did you kind of wrap your head around the concept? Right. Well, when I started as an entrepreneur, we didn't have iPhones and, you know, we were living in pagers. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Thank you for the laugh. I'm not the only one that remember pagers. Uh, so, you know, I, I go back to, you know, content and the delivery of content was ext was very different. It was more paper driven yeah. and, and book driven then. Uh, for me as a, an entrepreneur today, if I hadn't had my military experience, uh, I think I would have been a very different entrepreneur. I, I approach things from a rehearsal perspective, understanding the criticality of telling a story. Hmm. Um, you know, I even told my, my son, he's at Ohio State. and. He's, uh, I told him, you want to be an entrepreneur, take a storytelling course. <laughs> It'll be the most important course yeah. you can take to raise money. So when you're talking about raising money, that's, that's a really interesting point here uh, as we talk about education, right? Um, most scientists and researchers today, if they are at a university level, they have a really big challenge on spending not only their resources, but actually gaining funding uh, from an educational point of view, yeah. right? That they, they need to get someone that's going to fund their research. How do you think that like either your company yeah. or uh, another blockchain company, like we're talking about my friend John Wise from Low Key Coin, mm -hmm. um, how do you see the, the industry evolving and facilitating researchers and people that are thinking into solutions that are going to change the world uh, get fundraised. Yeah, I'm really excited about this. One of the great things that the blockchain is going to enable us to do is to uh, deliver grant funding to researchers uh, in which we can take a really long and arduous and expensive process of doing a request for proposals, uh, getting those proposals reviewed and scored, and then releasing funds to the researchers. It is an incredibly difficult and, and arduous process. And by moving that to the blockchain, you're, you're able to absolutely change at a fundamental level the way grants are awarded and managed. And, and I think and then you add the cryptocurrency component to that and, and you have a, a, a really a, a, a little cauldron of uh, opportunity. Interesting. Now, we actually filed a patent for that. So those of you here that are anti-patent, uh, to get funding, it's often very important with professional investors that you have some intellectual property behind it. It uh, doesn't mean you've got to enforce it, but at the same time, it validates from a publication perspective. It, yeah. it validates that you actually have a very good idea and that there's uh, a solution there. Interesting. And, it, and is that what you guys facilitate uh, at Nobella? Like how to put these components together and search for the, the funds that are available out there through grants? Yeah, we're more like the GitHub for scientists, except they earn crypto for collaborating. And so we provide them an entire scientific ecosystem that literally starts with intellectual properties that we bring to them. So there's $4 trillion worth of dormant intellectual property around the world just sitting there not doing anything. So we look at it kind of like the Lyft or Airbnb of IP. So we bring in the tired and depressed IP and we then open that up to the researchers around the world. But that's not enough. Then we bring in requests for proposals. So the Gates Foundation or the Wellcome Trust uh, any of these organizations that offer grants, we can host those for them for free on the platform for those researchers for free. This is all free. And now that researcher can come in, apply for that grant, 
and then the other researchers in the community, then they vote on which of those proposals should be funded. So you're offboarding the arduous and expensive task of reviewing RFPs from the, from the grantor to now the community of experts that are out there who really want to do it. And then you can provide them free lab equipment. So you have these uh, vendors around the world that have equipment that's five years old sitting in a warehouse. They donate it, they get a tax deduction for it, and there's a researcher in Nigeria that benefits from that. Mm. And then you provide them the manuscript development tool. Uh, we have a partner with Doodoc, and uh, this is like Google Documents on multiple steroids. And so those researchers get free access to that. And then they can drop that manuscript on a preprint server that can go out to an open access publisher. So by providing the researchers that entire ecosystem from start to finish, uh, and then giving them cryptocurrency for that collaboration to that Angolan scientist, that is a huge thing for that person. It may not be big for a, a Western scientist, but for the underserved in Asia, Africa, and Latin America, having a system of free tools uh, and services for them that they're rewarded in crypto is, it's a, it's a game changer for them. And is that also impacting like social science research and STEM research? Like how do you see that evolving? Sure, and it ties into the education. One of the problems that we have today in the educational field is that the delivery of the content to the student lags significantly the breakthroughs. So CRISPR-Cas9, for example, uh, the textbooks that are coming out now actually talk about it, but that technology is three years old mm -hmm. uh, and completely disruptive to the biotech space. So the nice thing about having this content curated in a real-time way for STEM and social sciences is that you now generate educational content in a real-time, deliverable way. So now that high school biology teacher can say, hey, go out to Nobelo.tech and take a look at... Uh, this particular CRISPR-Cas9 technology, and somebody in the world has synthesized all of that research down into a way that can be absorbed by that student, and all in a crowdsourced way. And you're working with universities on that? Right, well, we get intellectual properties from those universities, and then, of course, the researchers and the postdocs and the, uh, the PhD candidates and masters, those folks are all within that platform, obviously collaborating for free, and they're the ones that are developing and curating that content. So uh, you have that student opportunity to have that interaction directly with those researchers as they do that work. Uh, do, do you see that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, what you're talking about too is like anybody out here too, if you have a great concept, there's always money. There really is, and, and you could crowdfund it, or the key is we have to have clear intentions of what we're doing and explain it in a simple way. So for me, I always teach by experience, and I've always been an entrepreneur, and when I have a good concept, the people will show up in your life. The money will show up in your life, but the key is that you need to run your business. You need to be the architect of your business and your own life, too. So that's really the key is once you, once you see that, and even if you're sitting here, maybe you're manifesting him now to help you create uh, your business in a real way. And, and I just want to encourage everybody out there that all the resources is always there for us. And do you believe it? If you believe it, you're going to create it. And, you know, that's why I love neuroscience. You know, we're all walking around with our own beliefs, right? Whatever that belief is, we're manifesting our, in this holographic world that we're living in or this reality that we're living in. So the key is, is really believe in what you're doing. And that's what I do in this, uh, in all industries is uh, I wrote my first book when I was 21 years old and it came, I was sleeping and it came through a dream, a loud voice yelled, write a book. And I wrote a book called Wake Up. And I thought I was going to sell a million copies way back at age 21. But what happened was it really brought a lot of success to my business. And then um, I created a multi-million dollar business and the book was a really great vehicle because I was a young guy with the book. It gave me credibility. And so that's why I just want to encourage anybody out there, all of the dreams will come true for you in this lifetime if you believe it. It's, you need to believe in yourself. Once you believe in yourself, then you'll attract those right people in your life to help you with everything. And you talk about crowdfunding too. 
um, when I do these books, say we have 20 people, right? Well, I get everybody getting to know the 20 people. I do Zoom calls or Skype calls where they get to know each other. And that alone, uh, you start, if, if you want to raise a billion dollar company, a million dollar company, surround yourself with people that are doing it. And so when I do these wake up books, in this book we're talking about now, you get to know the other authors. You get to, uh, uh, you get to uh, hopefully do business with the other authors. And then when the book goes out, it goes out worldwide and your story gets out too. And then when you meet somebody at a Starbucks or you meet somebody at a, uh, a network, they say, what do you do? You can say, well, I'm doing this and also I'm in a best-selling book. And I tell people, give a book away. Um, you know, when I meet people, I, give a, I, give, I have a little pocketbook that when they ask for a business card, this is, says how I sold millions of books. So I give this out. And so I give it out for free. But eventually, uh, I gave one to you. And he yeah, says, I got I'm, one. I'm writing a book. <laughs> so me giving this out, now he's going to probably become one of my clients. And, um, and that's why I teach people a book is a lead generator for your business. And most people that write a book, guess what? They write a book and they think it's going to go out and sell millions of copies. It usually doesn't. I tell people that even if you sold 5,000 copies of your book and out 5,000 people read your book, let's just say 500 people gave you an extra $1,000 for your business. That's a $500,000 business that you have because you gave a book out or someone bought the book. So that's why I really teach it. I teach by experience. And that's why I'm so honored to be in this industry. Uh, I've been investing money and and I like this industry, and I really feel that I could be a, a huge purpose to this industry to get a book out and, and hit it on the bestseller list and get more credibility uh, for this whole blockchain and also uh, cryptocurrency um, you know, space. And so. do, you, do you think we need more books in this space? Well, yeah, I think, a, you know. You know, when I was researching for books for my class, I found that there were very little yeah. uh, or very few. Yeah. Very few books available. There are some out there if you go on Amazon, um, especially on security tokens. I was like, there's nothing on security yeah, tokens. Well. I better write a book. Uh, the UCLA requires a book. So, well. so, but do you feel that like as a, as a professional of the publishing industry, we're lacking more material? Or is it because the industry advances so fast that books become um, obsolete? So self-help books never die. And, and, and again, they have a shelf life. That it can last but you're not going to write a self-help book no. for blockchain, right? Well, it was like, help yourself on the blockchain. Well, help yourself to create mm. abundance. So maybe you twist it with, um, you know, words in a sense that, hey, you know, blockchain can bring you abundance and prosperity. So I think absolutely that if you're a professional, writing a book could be the best move ever. However, I meet so many people that wrote a book and I talk and they say, well, I got a book. And what happens, they're a little embarrassed because they wrote a book, and guess what? They didn't do any marketing, so the book never got out. And so the key is, there's systems for everything. Do you know that anybody in here, I can make a New York Times bestseller for anybody in here, even if your book sucked? It really, and I don't do that, but again, New York Times bestsellers and Amazon bestsellers is because people know how to make it a New York or Amazon bestseller. I could take very few copies and make it a New York Times bestseller. But what's that going to do? It's going to get you on CNN. It's going to get you maybe an Ellen. And you talk about your business. What are you really doing? So the book was a lead generator to get out there. So once you use, you know how to use a book as a tool for your business, then you prosper. Most people, they write a book and that's about it. They don't run a book as a business. You know, there's, there's already an analog to this, right? You know, we went through it with the ICO boom with white papers. You know, the people that wrote really good stories and embodied it into a white paper, not even a business plan, were attracting stupid amounts of stupid capital. <laughs> yeah. and so, you know, this is a, yeah. a phenomenal example of yeah. that. Yeah, and what you said, you know, you told your son the storytelling, right? And that's it. You want a story. And... You know, you want your story of how you got started. People really are interested in how you got started and you're human and you haven't been successful all your life, that you lived in your car, you did this, and you barely made it, and then you came up. That's what people really want to hear. And then once you get at them as a relationship, you could go a little bit deeper into what you do and educate somebody. Just like you are a, a teacher, 
you don't just throw your students the first day in class everything. You sort of have to have layers. And that's what you want to do uh, when you write a book or you write a story in one of my books. Your story is the same story when you're up on stage. And it's, it's, it's a story that's going to capture someone's attention for them to be a client for you. And that's, you know, Tim Draper, he's a perfect example. Um, you know, he's not selling books. He's giving his book out for free. <laughs> And, you know, the last time he was here, he gave out a thousand books for free. And so, again, you know, his book got, it got him on all the talk shows. You know, all, author, all, all successful people, the book is a lead generator to get them for PR. It's a PR piece for free. You know, how much does it cost to go and get uh, publications in these big magazines? And you write a book, you may be written in L.A. Times or L.A. Uh, New York Times uh, paper for free, right? That would cost a lot of money for a company. So a book opens that door for your company to get on stage, you know. So, so we, essentially, we need some of the entrepreneurs here in the room to write a book about their story and how they learned about blockchain and how they're utilizing blockchain to change the world. That's awesome. Ooh, yeah, and that's, yeah, and that's it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. <laughs> yes. Oh, there you go, yeah, um, well. Well, Stephen, if you would write a book uh, and you're in social sciences and research, what would you say that book would be? Stephen or Jason? Jason, Jason. Oh, Jason. sorry, Jason. Jason. It's Stephen already now, or he <laughs> writes it. <laughs> uh, can you ask the question again? Sure, sure. If you would write a book, because I know your, your company is about like research and developing IP and putting that mm -hmm. in a... Uh, in an environment where you compensate people <coughs> or at least incentivize them mm -hmm. via crypto to continue to research. Uh, correct? Am, am right, I correct? Right, right. Uh, do you think that we need more publications for that? Is that like a topic that's not clear for most people that are in the space? Uh, how could we educate people about that opportunity? You know, this, this is something that we've given a lot of time and thought to which is the generation of content. Uh, you know, Stephen takes content and memorializes it into a capsule, and then you digest the capsule. But the actual assimilation of information today actually doesn't occur in these large capsules. They occur in small bits. And so what, what we've discovered is that if you look at the way social media do works today, the people that are followed are people that generate content and tell a story mm. in very concise, small bits. Mm. And what you have to do is, is be able to harness those leaders of content development and get those leaders in a crowdsourced way to influence the others by the distribution of that content. And so I think that, that at the end of the day, the question here is that it's all about the content, the curation of the content, and the distribution of the content. And the scientific community is overwhelmed with content. It mm. is completely inundated. Uh, there is no way to keep up with the amount of research that comes out on a daily basis. You know, we think the blockchain space moves fast. Uh, the scientific world is at lightning speed compared to the blockchain space. And it's imp almost impossible to keep up. And so they've turned more to these very small bits of information where the title carries so much in, uh, power that that then is what sends the signal to the, on, to the uh, researcher that he or she should uh, engage in reading more in depth. Yeah. It's really changed the assimilation of information dramatically. Interesting. And uh, is there a specific area regarding blockchain that you feel we need more or less content? Well, obviously more, right? Because we're trying to educate people on a, on a mass scale. Right. And there's two things that I think, uh, to, your, to your question here, Alex, is I think two things. One is the blockchain space has developed a fairly um, pre-dot-com type of reputation. Um, th there's been a lot of knuckleheads running around out there selling snake oil. And so we have to overcome that. And so you need content that goes out to the world that's serious content, that really adds a level of professionalism to this space. Uh, so I think that's the first thing. The sec so you need professional content. Mm -hmm. I think the second thing is, is that we need to really uh, incubate 
ideas that are, they're tremendous opportunities in the blockchain space, just tons of them. And I think that we could really incentivize entrepreneurs to tell their story, to really incubate more ideas that could go into publication. Like, you know, when I, I told a venture capitalist that we were moving grants to the blockchain, it was completely blown away. You know, I never ever would have thought or imagined doing something like that or managing intellectual property uh, provenance on a blockchain. And, and so I would have only come up with that if I had read, hadn't, I wouldn't have come up with that, I hadn't read real good content about that area. So I think the second thing is we, we need really good authors to stimulate more authorship. Mm. Yeah, nice. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's that's great too because there's you know there's a couple of types of books like academic books right and you, I have to admit academic books are pretty uh, boring, and so um, a lot of times people think uh, especially like someone like you're very successful at what you do, um, a lot of times like say like Steve Jobs like if you when you read his book the the reason you wanted to read his book is because you wanted to know about his life, and and that's what that's what as you as an author to become more successful. And that's why I see a lot of times, if, if you gave me a book or some education on blockchain, if I read it and I read the first paragraph and I'm just so confused, that's where, that's where it gets really hard. And that's why I see a lot of people out here too, you can't really explain what you do. And uh, things are easy. I, I went actually to UCLA. And um, go Bruins! Yeah, Woo. and and I remember I, I I was studying physiology, but we had this teacher that he was so friggin' smart, and like we're all getting D's in the class, <laughs> and it's like this guy, this guy is like so smart that he's trying to prove that he's so smart. And then I had another teacher that he was like a cool guy like you, uh, you know, he got up and said, "This is how things work," and he showed us, you know, and 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 that's where like we all just like really loved learning, and I think that if whatever you're writing about in this field you know make it simple make it easy and and get the message across again tell a great story once you capture someone's attention then you could give them more and more uh, but overwhelming somebody is the worst thing somebody could do and and we all read books where we started reading the first couple pages and hopefully we put it down or we read the whole book and we wish we would have put it down and the key is you want to grab someone's attention and you want to keep their attention. And what I love about books nowadays too, I'm not really a book guy anymore. I'm an audio guy. So we do, you know, we do audio ebooks and paperback books too. So we do all three forms of learning. And that's what you need to think about too. You have to have ways for each person to learn what you're teaching. That, that's so, that's yeah. very true. Like yeah. we see it at UCLA, this uh, transition into people learning a lot more through uh, multimedia yeah. channels. Yeah. Like some people are good readers and they like to read a lot. Some people like to watch YouTube videos. Yes. Some people like to go to lectures. Some people like to um, listen to audiobooks. Mm. Some people like to read articles. Some people like case studies and discussions. So a mix of that is, is very interesting. Yeah. Yes. And, and a segue to that, as we have uh, a, a good amount of entrepreneurs here in the room, that might want to join your book. No, thanks. Um, what you know? Give us some some like guidelines. What are what yeah. are like? Do you, are you looking for like startup stories? Yeah. Are you looking for people that made a gazillion dollars doing an ICO? Yes. And uh, when when are yeah. we gonna well, be able to read the book? we're gonna have yeah, we're gonna have some stories with very successful people, but also I really I'm really looking for stories that someone with enthusiasm and also. I'm really looking for people that really have a balanced business because I do charge to be in this book. I, it's not free. Uh, I don't know if you, anybody ever put on a free conference or something. If you have people coming in free, they usually don't do anything. And so I do charge, uh, this book, it was $5,000 per person, but I charge $2,000. So if you're learning, if you can't figure out how to make $2,000, you're probably not ready to get your business out yet. So, because I put you in, a group of 20 people and even in that group you should meet other people that you do business with so even meeting the other 20 people you should do sometimes I would say literally hundreds of thousands of dollars in business and I you know I, I have one author that came in a book with um, it was uh, Brian Tracy and and uh, he came in a book with him and they still do business you know so he's made hundreds of thousands of dollars 
You know, I'm doing a book right now with all these uh, neuroscience doctors, and they're all networking, and they're all putting on their conferences. So even in the book itself, there's a lot of masterminding that's going to happen, and then when the book is going to go out uh, worldwide, and it's going to be guarantee a bestseller. And, and I guarantee all books are bestsellers. So, all right. Yeah, so. And uh, when can we <laughs> get the book? Well, uh, well I say the book's going to probably be out. Uh, right now I'm doing marketing. Probably six months or less we'll have the book out, and I'll give more guidelines once we get more stories in. And, uh, and then I'll give guidelines. And it's a great process, too, of um, people writing these short chapters because you guys may want to do your own book, too. But this is a great process to go through that, do this book, and then if you do write your own book, you're going to know more about how to make a bestseller, how to network, how to get it out into social media. And that's what I am. I, I, you know, I love marketing. And uh, one person market, or you have 30 people market. I go for 30 people because we all have databases. It's going to go out in a bigger way. So that's what I teach is marketing and how to make money with a book. A book is a cash flow system for your business. All you guys out there that don't have a book, you're leaving money on the table. You should learn how to use a book for a, a separate cash flow system for your business. You know, one of the, the, the things that just rang my doorbell uh, on that discussion is that in the scientific community, many people have heard this publish or perish uh, moniker, and publication is so critical to the scientific yeah. community for the distribution of, of uh, content that as I was thinking about this, I thought, my goodness, you know, you got 10 million of the most highly educated people in the world collaborating. Hmm. They're going to generate a lot of content. Yeah. How much of that content is going to go into the form of books or journals? Yes. And uh, I hadn't thought about that, but there's a, a nice yeah. opportunity. Yes, absolutely. Do, do you think about utilizing that to bring on more scientists to your platform? Because from, you know, just basic internet marketing, right? You become like a chicken and egg problem. You need scientists to have IP, to have people that would buy that IP, right? And then the circle goes around. Do you foresee that, like, creating content and creating books and, and uh, maybe, like, pushing through that venue would be a, a good way of spreading the word around your platform? And Right, well, you know, from a vision perspective, when you crowdsource the most highly educated people on the planet, all kinds of really interesting revenue streams emerge, but also very interesting models that aren't necessarily revenue generating things can come out. So for example, you can launch a university, mm -hmm. right? Because you've got the faculty, <laughs> they're all right there. Mm. And so now you've given those folks the opportunity to not only come in and collaborate, um, gain cryptocurrency for that collaboration, uh, develop content, distribute that content, but now they can build entire educational systems in which they can participate in. So uh, the, the idea of moving content, at the end of the day, it's all about content. Nobody wants to come into a platform where there's no content or interaction. So it's really critical on my platform that we curate content and we stimulate the interactions. So bringing in that intellectual property is the start. If we don't have something in which those scientists can rally around, hey, we have to work re even harder to get them to collaborate and interact. So that's why we go out and spend a tremendous amount of time and resources bringing in that intellectual property and then providing it for free to those researchers out there. And then the rest of the platform of the ecosystem falls into place. Interesting, very interesting. Um, and as we get to the last five minutes of this panel, I'd like to open it up to the floor. Maybe someone might have a question. Gentleman over there, it's gonna ask a question. All right, fantastic. Uh, please tell us your name, you, the company you're behind, so you can have a little bit of a promo and, uh, and the question. Hey, thanks everybody. Oh, this is really loud. Uh, my name is Chris Groshong. I'm out of San Diego. I run a company called Coinstructive that was a consulting practice that turned into continuing uh, education for professionals. So it goes along a lot with the theme of this talk. And I, you mentioned professional, more professionalism in this industry. What are some of the things that you think are going to be most critical to the mass adoption on the professional level, because I see that is an opportunity to really help drive it from a different perspective. A lot of them, people are talking about what it means to mass adoption from an end user perspective, 
as at, at the lowest level, but I think there's something really about important about talking to the people who are providing services at a professional level. Yeah, uh, you know, I'll take first and then we can all go along. Um, I would say that one, you have to have services that are easy, right? So like the legal Zooms of the world, the, 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 like it's an easy service for you to onboard and get legal services. Mm. Uh, standardization across blockchain protocols, it's, it's a must, right? Or else you're kind of like, I'm buying an apple and this guy's buying a banana and nobody's here is buying anything that matches. Uh, as well as you're gonna see a, a lot of um, companies getting their assets tokenized. And as soon as they get their assets tokenized, they're gonna start understanding how the technology behind works. But I think that if it would be a low hanging fruit, I'll start educating the guys at the top of companies so that they can just turn on the light. Because I, tell me if you don't feel this way, right? The first time you came across blockchain and you really understood what it was, you were like, uh-huh. And then a light <coughs> switch turned on into your head. And you're like, wow, this could change the world. Right. And then from there, you started like flipping into whatever you are doing, whatever your company is doing, and how blockchain could take that forward. So I think that's kind of like the, the tipping point we're still trying to do. Yeah, for me, it's use cases. <laughs> this is a space that is in desperate need of use cases. That Agreed. ties back Agreed. to Agreed. Your, yeah. uh, your thoughts or your statements about experiential learning. Right? Yes, exactly. And, and to that, as an entrepreneur, you know, I feel like Gumby. I'm pulled in 50,000 different directions. And one of the things that's extremely difficult is to write anything of length. It's very difficult. But it's really critical that my uh, use case gets out to the world to stimulate other people and bring some level of professionalism to the space. So that's why a partnership with uh, a publisher and an editor can be really important if you can get somebody to assist on the writing of that story even if it's you just dictate it, which is what I'm actually in the process of doing, I'm dictating it into a recorder and I've got a ghost author who throws it all the rest together. Uh, so I think that that's what we've got to do for our entrepreneurial community is help them be able to tell their story because they're pulled in so many different directions. Beautiful, and I agree with that too. And that's why I'm here to help this industry get their story out and make it simple and, and, and have a book as a credibility tool for them. So I agree with that. Great, thank you. All right, we got time for one more question. Right. Or, hey guys, yeah, we can squeeze in two. Like, why uh, don't you guys ask two? Whoa, we got three. Okay, wow, we're going okay. popular here. Yeah. Uh, re really appreciate the discussion. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, All right, Steve we'll Jordan, go. do you think there's room for a fiction book in crypto to help oh. spark adoption? You know, and that would be fun, yeah. You yeah. know, if you did it right, you know, it, it would actually be a great book. I actually have this book, Awaken Women, I'm doing, and a woman asked me that. She said, could I write my story as a fictional story? And I said, I think that would be fun. Because again, you want to engage your readers. Right. And it's almost like a children's book, right? If you, you know, it's, I remember one time I wanted to learn about a subject and I met a professor and he goes, well, go down and, and pick up a uh, book for kids on that and start there and then you'll gain. Mm -hmm. So I think a fictional book would be fun and interesting and, and use imagination. So yes, do one, I'll help you. <laughs> go Bruins. Go Bruins. Uh -huh. And follow- Did you say go Buckeyes? That's uh -huh. what I'm sure that's what I heard. <laughs> we do have more national championships, right? A <laughs> hundred and plus. Yeah. S the Billionaire on Instagram, by the way, go follow him, that's me. <laughs> uh, I'm building a Instagram and I would like to do a book and I was being serious about the feminism part on a man's perspective and how it's destroying uh, the United States culture and how it's separating the sexes versus the sort of quote unquote equality because I believe it's more important to be in uni unity versus equality because I believe equality is a sort of illusion versus yes unity where it's actually we're genuinely uniting people so as a first book first time author what do you recommend to slowly bring that information because you explained about don't make it too complex make it engaging tell your story how would you go about it to bring yeah. such a hot topic well first off uh, your first book I definitely write 104 to 144 pages something that's gonna capture someone's attention 
and with a great title too. So what we would do is sit down and create a roadmap for you and come up with the chapters and then just write a kick-ass book that people are going to get it and your, it, your message is going to be your story. And, and so, yeah, so we would have to have more than 53 seconds, but that's what I do with people is make sure once we do a book, uh, it's your content, but we could even dictate it like he was saying, uh, you know, you could speak it and we could write it for you. So there's all different ways. So I would love to have a conversation with you more in depth. Sure. Uh, yeah. Are you available after off stage? We could talk a little bit and I'm, I'm here in Laguna Beach, California. So I mm. think you're probably in LA, right? Yes, born yeah, and raised. So, yeah, we could have a conversation or we could talk a little bit after this. Yeah. Okay, thank well, you. All right, yeah. awesome. Last question. Yeah. Hey, we're we're going to get kicked I'll out keep of it the... short. It's kind of more of a commentary. I'm new to the blockchain, but in a short period of time, I seem to have had a big impact because I'm speaking about an economic message that turned out accidentally to be an invitation for people to be curious about the blockchain. I think everybody in this room is actually dependent on that solution, right? About adoption. That's what it's going to take. You see, you're not really going to get people to adopt without them being curious. You've got to grab their attention, sure. which is basically what you're saying. So I stumbled onto a way to do that. And I think it's an additional, I think when you talk about a use case situation, you know, that makes it enabled that people want to use that, it's because it's coming from purpose, right? Hmm. I think there's another aspect of purpose which has to do with us as people you know, just as evolution. Like we invented money, we put it down, we all talk about how we hate it and we love this blockchain thing, but money was invented for this incredible purpose to trade value. I mean, before, how would you do that? If I lent you my cows, right? Mm -hmm. We went from this society to this side, and now we're in a place where we can actually grow all these value systems together. So it lets us question, a question that I ended up framing for bringing awareness to impact investing, not to the blockchain. Mm. And how many people have noticed that impact investing in the blockchain just seems to be merging together? Because mm -hmm. I certainly see that. I don't know about your perspective. No, no, yeah, yeah. great, great right? comment. I like um, it. I'll have to cut off because yeah. our, our team here is like buzzing and uh, we got to get out. <laughs> but great comment. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, great. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you.